Amen. If you have your Bible with you today, go ahead and get it out and fire up your Bible apps and find with me the book of John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Today, I want to share with you a very, very, very important message, one I consider to be one of the most important messages ever taught, and I know I say that a lot. I don't say it always, and, uh, and this is just right up there, so very important, the revelation of God's ways get established in my heart when I pray, and I think, oh! Everyone needs this. How can they live without this? And I truly believe anyone who was hindered by the snow is, <laughs> is uh, missing something that they need. Very frequently, we, we tend to uh, try to fix things in our lives from the outside in instead of the inside out. Sometimes we deal with the results uh, instead of the cause. Another way to say it is we're, we're focused on the fruit and not on the root, and if we can get to the core issue, uh, a lot of things change by themselves. A lot of struggles, a lot of hardships, a lot of ways of living life that aren't successful go by the wayside simply because we fixed the internal aspects of it. It's, it's kind of like, um, I, I can see this in life and people and myself, that, that children have a need to be loved by their parents. For some reason, we all seem to be hardwired that way, that we really just do care about what our parents think about us. And, and not, all, not everyone has had, a, had ideal situations with that, and my hope is that you replace the Father's love with, with whatever you lacked. But we see that it really does have an impact on people when they receive it their odds of success in life go way up. It's amazing how that works. People think, well, it's all about if you grew up with money and opportunity. No, a greater factor is when you grew up with love. That really makes a difference, a long-term difference in people's lives. In fact, the absence of it often leads to many destructive habits. People get confused when they they, uh, are abused or neglected, it can produce serious damage to the soul, and it creates confusion in life. Many have confusion in the area of sexuality, and that's highly promoted these days, but often it's, con- it's tied and connected to this. Other times, doors are open to, de- to demons because of this hole left, or people lack this needed ingredient for their life, and they go pursuing it from uh, wrong sources. Amen. I want to read here in John 17, if you had time to find that, I want to begin in verse 20. Jesus is actually in the middle of a prayer here, and so we're reading the prayer of Jesus. Isn't that cool that you can see, hey, what did Jesus pray? Well, there it is. Here's one example. Verse 20, I do not pray for these alone. These alone meaning those standing there, those his disciples that are present on the earth with him, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Anybody know who that is? Yeah, I'm, I'm one of them. If you're a believer, you are included in this prayer. Jesus made specific mention of you by saying those who would believe through their word. Uh, Verse 21, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Another way to say that is Jesus is praying that those, and then by extension, us, would have the same kind of relationship with the Father that he had. That just as he was one with the Father, you would be one with the Father. And you would be one with the Father. And it would be such an impacting relationship that the world would take notice. And they would come and they would believe based on you having such a close relationship with the Father. Verse 22. 
And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them as you have loved me. Isn't that quite the statement there? That he said, that he said, I want them to know that you love them just like you love me. In fact, the, the New Living reads, you love them as much as you love me. Did you know that's true? Wow. I think it should be, you know, quickly embraced and understood that Jesus was loved, was and is, but during this time on earth, he was loved by his father. In fact, God went to great lengths to let everyone know how he felt about Jesus. God revealed himself and expressed this love in spectacular ways at times. Uh, if you would, go, go over to the book of Matthew. Let me show you an example of this. Matthew chapter 3, just a little left turn, a few books over. Swing by Luke's house and Mark's house. Pull in Matthew's driveway. Matthew, the third chapter. This is the uh, account. This is one of the records we have of Jesus' baptism. Okay? Now, that also signified the beginning of his ministry. Or at least, you know, we know the first miracle was in at the, that wedding. But... Uh, Jesus started his ministry here. Prior to this, he was kind of obscure, unknown. I don't think the devil even knew who he was. Uh, he wasn't on the scene. He wasn't well-known. He wasn't famous. People didn't say, hey, there's Jesus, other than those who knew him from a natural standpoint. But one day, Jesus comes walking down the road, and John the Baptist is out doing his baptizing. And as a prophet, he looked at Jesus and said, whoa. <laughs> well, that's my words. But he said... Behold, I would say, whoa, <laughs> the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He saw who Jesus really was, not just in the flesh, but how he was the Son of God. And, and of course, then Jesus was baptized in water. The scripture says uh, that the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form as a dove, right? So he went, got baptized. He got empowered by the Spirit of God. And, and, and this is what happened when he did that, verse 17. 317, and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. C consider this event. God spoke from heaven. It wasn't a still small voice. It wasn't an inward leading, an inward knowing. It wasn't just a conviction in someone's heart. God stuck his face out and said, That's, that boy is mine right there. That is my beloved son. I am pleased with him. It was done in such a spectacular fashion. We know this was no small event. God wanted everybody to know. He was announcing, this is my son, and this is what I think about him. Why was that so important? You'll see as, 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 as we go further. But God wanted everyone to know how he felt about him. This is interesting to me. This is Matthew. If you were to read Mark and Luke's account of the same event, they use the language of God speaking directly to the Lord, saying, you are my beloved son. You are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. What interests me about that and why that stands out is because of the very next verse, which is chapter 4 and verse 1, which reads, uh, which reads, <laughs> then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. This is my son, and I love him. And by the way, Jesus, let's go be tempted by the devil. <laughs> In other words, it almost seems like a contradiction. It almost seems, how is that 
love. I love you. Now I'm leading you out. Uh, Let me give you my take on this. I believe this is right. I don't think the father wanted Jesus to be tempted by the devil. We know God himself does not tempt people with evil. He doesn't test and try people with evil. Um, uh, But I believe that this temptation or this attack, if you will, from Satan was inevitable. It's going to happen. It's not withheld or restricted because of God's love. But when Jesus went public, he came on the scene. He is in obedience to God. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. He's going to be attacked. Satan is going to poke up his ugly head and try to get Jesus off course with these temptations. It seems like it's almost, uh, why don't we deal with this on our terms and not his? Get out, get out of town, get away from everybody, time of prayer, time of fasting. Satan's going to tempt you, but you're ready to go. Can you see that? Jesus wasn't out of the will of God. He was in the will of God. Now, now watch. That's different sometimes than what we face. Sometimes we face temptations because we're dumb. We go the wrong places. We hang out with the wrong people. We get involved in wrong things. And that's not compared. And and we want to, I don't understand why Jesus overcame and I keep falling. Well, because he doesn't didn't go where you go. When he, when the devil came after him, he was in prayer and and, and had had dedicated, consecrated his life to the Lord. So that's just a better position. It's, it's home field advantage, right? So I think the temptation was inevitable. Jesus was ready to go. Uh, But I do believe that these verses are close to each other. Forget the chapter. The people put, you know, human beings added the chapters and the verses. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Then the spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. If you're ever going to be opposed or challenged or tempted in any way, one of the basis, the foundations for your success is found in God's love for you. When you know your position with him, and you know how much he loves you, you have a much higher uh, chance, opportunity to succeed in your resisting, in your remaining strong in the middle of the battle. I don't think Jesus was questioning the Father's love, but I also don't think it hurt. Man, right before I got here, because you know sometimes if you're going through something, you have questions, what in the world? Why is this happening? Where did this come from? And the enemy will drop thoughts in your mind like, well, you've got sin in your life or you've, got, you've done so many things wrong. That's why it's happening. No, what word do I need to hang on to? He loves me. The Father is not sending this to me. He's not putting me through this. He is loving me so I can overcome and be victorious in the middle of this situation. Our love for God... Uh, Rather, his love for us is the foundation of our success and overcoming when the enemy comes against us. If you choose to do the will of God for your life, you commit to him, his spirit manifests on you. Uh, You shouldn't be surprised if if you come under attack. You shouldn't be caught off guard like, where in the world did this come from? I thought I was right with God. You are. That's why it's happening. I, one of the things we do, you know, we have a, a, a Bible college here. Some of you are students. Some are graduates. And, uh, and, and you're, you're awesome. <laughs> one of the things we tell our, our Bible college students uh, most years, I think, at the beginning, is to not be surprised if in your obedience to God and dedicating yourself more fully to doing these things, that you have opposition along the way. Temptation, there'll be, there'll be temptation to quit. There'll be op- opportunities for you to take the exit, the off-ramp from finishing your course and fulfilling God's will for your life. Always just tell them up front, hey, ready? Ready or not? This is coming. Don't be surprised. Yeah, some get surprised anyway. We told you though, (laughs) but that happened to Jesus and Jesus overcame. You can overcome. You can be victorious in your life. 
Again, Jesus wasn't outside of the will of God. He was being led by the Spirit into this place. And so I know this, God's love for me does not mean that He will not give me the opportunity to personally overcome. It's not when God loves you, you are totally held back from any kind of temptation that would ever come. No, you have to go to heaven to get that. While you're here, He loves us and will still be tempted, have opportunities to quit. What are you going to do? You know, a few years later, a couple years, I don't know exactly the time, but a couple years later, in the middle of Jesus' ministry, there was another experience that he had that was very similar. This time, he and Peter and John went up on a mountain, and the glory of God came down, <laughs> surrounded them. It was awesome. It was powerful. And here God goes again, speaking out loud to, to everyone present. It's, it's Matthew 17, verse 5. Here's what happened. While, while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Now, wait a minute. Father, don't you have anything else to say? Because you already said that. This should get us to take note, not dismiss it as God only has one sentence. <laughs> He's saying the same thing again, and I, I firmly believe it's not because Jesus was questioning, oh, does the Father really love me? He was saying it for his benefit, but also for the benefit of those around him. He wanted everybody to know that he loved Jesus. Interesting. I think this shows multiple things. It shows his standing with the Father, that he was right with God. It, it, it reveals the future place of anyone who might be called a son in the future. Son meaning male or female, a son of God in the future. You have this standing of being loved by God. How many know you don't want to oppose someone whom God loves? That might be part of the message. He's saying, you respect him. You listen to what he has to say. I love him. I am pleased with him. You better pay attention. When God loves someone, you don't mess with them. That's part, that's part, part of the way I, I, I take this. I, I don't have just a self-preservation mentality for my own life. My preservation skills extend beyond me to those I love. You mess with my family, you mess with me. Anybody else feel that way? Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm going to protect myself to the best of my... I'm going to protect those I love. I'm going to stand up for them. I believe the Father does this. It's like our country. We, you'll hear the leaders of our country often say to, you know, the rough and tumble leaders of some rogue nations that are, you know, dangerous. Uh, they'll say... Uh, we will stand up for our citizens. We will protect them wherever they are. We will also stand up for our allies. Amen. And if you're a friend of the United States, you're a friend of someone who's got big missiles right. <laughs> and a big button, <laughs> right? And so, in other words, we, we care for those. We, we stand with those who love us. I, I, I think of it kind of like this. Um, Pastor PJ, come up. And... Uh, uh, Brother Dave, come up. Come in a little tighter. You got a problem with me? You want a piece of me? <laughs> Huh? You mess with me? I've got friends who love me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Bring it. Come on. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. Now, on a natural level, we understand that. What about on a spiritual level? That's what the Lord is talking about here. You don't mess with people whom God loves. That is dangerous business. I know uh, uh, 
several years ago, there was a person who, not in a physical way, but in a, uh, by writing, uh, came against me really strong. It was a, very much of a harsh verbal attack. And in the moment, of course, I was bugged by it. I didn't like it and, and so forth. And I, I, you know, it's like, what in the world? And then, of course, once I got to forgiving them and, <laughs> and all that, here's my thoughts. Dude, you're on dangerous ground. Seriously, I thought, you really don't want to be messing with me. Not because of those two guys, but because of the Lord. Don't you know the, the place I hold with him? Don't you know how he, what he thinks of me? You want to come against me? That, that's risky business, man. Now, at the same time, I think that way towards others. I don't have any business messing with another child of God because he loves them just as much as he loves me. I, 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 I'm, if ever you are tempted to speak against, to come against, to do ill and do wrong to someone else who is a part of God's family, you better slow down. Why? Because they are loved by him. Personally, God loves them. You don't, get, you don't attack those whom God loves. As I was preparing and studying these, te- these principles, these scriptures, I came across a word that, uh, it, it's not uncommon for this to happen, but that jumped out at me. One that I've read over a, a bunch of times. One that if you've read the Bible at all, you've seen it a lot probably buzzed right past it. It almost seems like an old-fashioned word, one that we don't use frequently in our vernacular today. And it is the word beloved. And when I read the word beloved, like I have a gazillion times, it jumped out at me, and I thought, beloved, beloved. And I realized, well, that's in these verses I've been reading, and I read past it. And that's all over the Scriptures I think it carries a lot of meaning, and the frequency of its use should grab our attention. Say, what's up with this beloved business? Let me give you, let me just read a few verses to you. Listen to these as examples. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 6 reads, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In the, do you know who that one is? That's a capital B there. That's Jesus. He calls Jesus the beloved. We know he did that in the other passages we state. We read, Jesus is the beloved, and you, if you are in him, you're accepted. That means if you are in the beloved, then you beloved yourself. You are also beloved in him. Romans 1 and verse 7 To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Paul, writing to the Christians at Rome, addresses them this way. Beloved of God. Do you ever think of yourself that way? Who am I? Well, according to the holy inspired written word, you are loved of God. You are his beloved. Yeah. Not just Jesus. Well, Jesus was perfect. Of course, God was pleased with him. This is written to regular folks who had accepted the gift of God's grace. They are also called beloved. Colossians 3.12, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. So again, they're addressed as what? Holy and Beloved. Here's another one. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. So again and again and again, Believers in the Lord are referred to as His beloved. That is no small thing and not 
uh, and not unimportant in any way. It is a primary way of speaking. And then as I began to read this more and more, I found out that these guys in the early church referred to one another this way too. It was very common for them to call out or, or write, obviously, in, in regards to someone else and, and refer to someone as our beloved so-and-so, like our beloved Paul, not just or our beloved brother Paul. They would use that language. Not just Paul, not just brother Paul, our beloved brother Paul. So they adapted the language that God had for them. They adapted that language for one another. And they thought of one another, not just as a person, not just as a, as a you know, disposable individual. Take them no, they thought of them as people that we love. Because God thinks of them that way. You are not just a, a saved person, not just in the family, not just in the covenant. You are literally loved by God. He went to great lengths to express that to Jesus and then anyone who would be in Christ. They are loved by him. Let me stretch this word out a little bit. The the English word beloved has these other words that kind of uh, amplify it. Think of these words. Precious, adored, much loved, cherished, treasured, prized, esteemed, liked, regarded, admired, and valued. You're one of his favorites. I don't know what you think about how God thinks about you. Some people think he's ticked off with them half the time. He's annoyed and kind of wants them to get away because, you know, because you come up short in so many areas. This is how he thinks about you. This is his heart towards you and me. Come on. If this doesn't set us up to succeed, I don't know what will. Why don't you do an exercise with me? Let's say these things out loud together. All right. Can you do that with me? As a, this is not self-exaltation. This is receiving what God has to offer us. Say it out loud. Say, I am am God's beloved. beloved. I'm precious, precious. Adored. adored, much loved, Cherished, Cherished. treasured, Treasured. prized. Prized. Say, I am esteemed, esteemed. liked, Liked. and highly regarded. I am admired admired. and valued. valued. I'm one of his favorites. favorites. (laughs) Now, if that felt weird at all to you, it might show that there's a difficulty in your heart to accept it. And that is very real for some people. You get complimented, and you think there's always an ulterior motive. Someone's trying to mess with you. You say something nice, say, yeah, I don't know, I guess, maybe. But when this lands in you as an utter conviction, a knowing, a reality of how God feels about you, you are so much better off and set up to succeed set up to overcome, to resist temptation, to live long and be successful in your life. This is how God thinks about us right now. This is the beginning. It's where everything starts. It's the foundation of this relationship with God. It's our freedom. It's our security, our confidence. It's our motivation. It is our bond and our appeal to the world. Jesus said, I want everyone to know how much you love them. Everyone in the world, I want them to see it so they'll believe in me too. What a draw it is. When this is skipped or just overlooked, we often replace it with religion. When this is misunderstood, we often come short of holiness. It's not an obscure fringe revelation. This is the reason salvation was purchased for you and me. It's repeated over and over and over in Scripture, both directly and through analogy and through parable and, and, and through, through stories. 
It is the basis for our life with God. You, love, you are his beloved. Amen. Think about the opposite for a moment. If you're not beloved, maybe you be hated. <laughs> and, you know, bad news, <laughs> you are hated. You're hated by the devil. That's why Jesus said, the thief comes not except to steal, kill, and destroy. When someone hates, and that's the nature of Satan, you're pursued until you're destroyed or until he, until he fails in that, in that pursuit. There's a guy, there's an example of that. In the, in the, it's the oldest book in the Bible, the, old, the first written book, oldest book. It's called the book of Job. You know what Job means? Hated. Who hated Job? Satan did. God didn't hate him. Satan did. That's why he pursued him until he got legal access to attack. Satan pursued Job to destroy him because he hated him. But I'm not going to be so caught up with that because I'm also loved. I'm hated by a loser. And I am loved by a winner. Come on. You are loved by Almighty God Himself. And I think that's stronger than anything that would come against us. Amen. If you need to picture my, my guys up here behind me <laughs> and then magnify that times a million, you have the love of God backing you up. He's for you and not against you. And whatever comes against you in life, know that in the middle of it, in the beginning, in the middle, and at the end, when you overcome, you are loved by Him. Say it out loud. Say, I am, I am. the Lord's beloved. He thinks highly of me. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for working in our hearts today, for showing us your ways, your love, showing us your, your purpose and your plan, showing us how you think, how you desire us, what motivated and moved you to work in our lives and work towards us. Thank you for sharing with us your very best and given us all of your goodness. For this we give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you the thanks. In Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. Thanks for watching the Life Church YouTube channel. You can join us live right here on YouTube every Sunday morning at 9.30. If you enjoyed today's message, share it with a friend. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any Life Church videos. For more information about Life Church, check out lcboise.com. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.